Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty, the number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This episode 162, today's guest is an actress, writer, and producer. You know her from Kyle XY, The Vampire Diaries, Two Girls, Two Guys and a Girl. She was a writer on the originals and legacies. And of course, she played Miss Rhode Island Karen in the season six premiere episode of Seinfeld, The Chaperone. Please welcome Marguerite McIntyre. Marguerite, thanks for joining. Thank you. Hi, guys. Marguerite, take us back. This was 29 years ago, believe it or not. The, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the season six premiere. Uh, really a lot of hype to this episode. The Chaperone, real fun episode. But tell us a little bit. I mean, early in your, in your career, obviously, I'm assuming there was some sort of audition process. Tell us a little bit about how you got the gig as Miss Rhode Island. Um. Well, first, thing, thank you very much for having me here. And then also, I did not, I have not seen the show in a long time. So literally today, I was like, I gotta, I need to watch it because I haven't seen it in so long. And it's so funny. Like, I laugh so hard and I feel like they are also funny. And Michael Kramer is so deeply funny. I like laughed out loud like three times. And I was like, I'm so proud of this. I'm so glad I got to do this one classic episode of this classic, classic show. And for me, it was really funny because I had been working in New York for that. I'd started my career in New York. I was doing theater and I happened to be in San Diego, not for work. And I got a call from my agents in LA who said, can you come up like today? They're trying to cast this thing on Seinfeld. And by then Seinfeld was such a big show, but because I worked in theater and this was 29 years ago, I missed a lot of shows that were on at night. Like I just didn't see nighttime shows. So I was always like, well, I guess I'll catch them when they're on at 11 at night. And that's when I would see stuff. So I had never seen an episode of it, but I knew it was supposed to be great and everybody loved it and all that. So it was like, oh yeah, like of course I'll come up. So I drove up from San Diego and I met Mark Hirschfeld's a casting associate. And I can't remember his name. And he was literally like the nicest man in the world. But before I got there, I had to get the sides and the sides at that point were like, um, like the curled up fax paper. Like it was so like, youngins don't have any idea what I'm talking about and you guys <laughs> might not but it literally was like you could if you touched it like the words would come off it was like this crazy crinkly paper and I'm reading this scene and I know she's supposed to be like a beauty <laughs> pageant contestant and I'm like I don't get how this is funny like I was like I don't know what to do. I know it's a comedy the show I, something I'm supposed to be doing something that's like funny I don't, I don't really get how it's funny so I was like, well, I'm just going to just commit, man. I'm just going to be this lady and see how it goes. So I went in there and I read for the, his associate and I had no idea like what was going on. Like I was like, I don't know, this is terrible. And he was like, okay, what are you doing in two hours? Can you stay? Can you like go meet everybody and, and read for this? And I said, sure. And he said, well, I want to warn you, like Jerry's going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. And I was like, I wouldn't have been able to pick Jerry Seinfeld out. Except, like I'd only seen him on like, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'll be fine. Cause I mean, I'm not. So I go a couple hours later and I am not going to lie. I've auditioned a lot in my lifetime. This was literally the best audition of my life. And not because of me, because of them, because I walked in this room and it was over at CBS Radford, where I'm now currently picketing. <laughs> it's so wild. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> back in the day, it was a different, different world. Um, I went in and there were like, like nine guys sitting in there and like a you. And I walked in and Mark Hirschfeld graciously, oh, hello, and is introduced. And everybody was very sweet. And there were all these, by the way, gorgeous women out there in this like waiting area. And I was like, oh, shit. And and they had said they'd been seeing, the reason they even called me is that they'd seen a lot of people, they'd seen a lot of actual beauty contestants, as well as actresses who had done pageants, and they're just really having trouble finding this role. And I was like, okay. So I went in and I literally sat down there like, do you have any questions? And I was like, you know, no, you know, and Mark Hirschfeld says, I'm going to read with you. I'm like, Okay. And he says the first line, whatever it is, like, as Miss America, what would be your first, whatever, what would be your, on your first thing in your agenda? And I just said, as Miss America, and they all started, I literally said three words and they started laughing. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? I was like, okay. And my theater 
person was like, great, a live audience. I know what to do. This is great. And it was literally the, like everything that it was not even right. Like it wasn't even that funny. I think there was a bit of desperation for them. They just were trying to find something. And I walked in and happened to be that something. So they just laughed at everything. And by the end, I was like, almost like a woozy from it. Like I stood up and I was like, I was like, thank you guys. This is literally the best like four minutes of my, thank you. This is wonderful. <laughs> so I left and I was like, this is just, this was the greatest. And then I ended up booking it and I was so excited and then um, had a great week. And I, I was around as much as I could be around because they were so good and so smart that I would sit in the like, the audience bits and just be like, I just want to watch these guys do what they do and, and soak it up. So I tried to like hang around, but just be unobtrusive for that week. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Wow. That's great. And yeah, wasn't this, I mean, according to, at least according to the, the, you know, IMDB and wiki and uh, the, was this your first sitcom? You met, you know, you mentioned that yeah. you had done. Yeah. And so the, 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 maybe that kind of na naivety that you were talking about of just kind of going in and not like getting too crazy that it's Jerry and not knowing the show that well and, yeah. and just being loose, it probably helped and came across. And, and I think you're right. You nail it in that, that scene, especially when you're just like, as Miss America, you know, you're very, <laughs> it's very over over the top but it's like it works because that's kind of what the role is supposed to be because that's what Miss America pageants are right they're always yeah. so over the top so yeah. it seems like that's kind of the angle you were taking it, it definitely yeah, I was just trying to do like her. what it felt like when I would watch those because they always seemed ridiculous like hilarious and ridiculous to me god bless all the women who do it it's all great but I mean I always I was I was always like a tomboy weirdo nerd girl so I'd be like I don't even understand what's going on where you can like stand there with your boobs all taped and whatever else you got like I heard women had to put like Vaseline on their gums and I was just like I don't even know what's going on there so to me it always looked like I'm just trying to like skate through this things so I was just trying to act like what they seemed like so it somehow worked and that was that was great that's great to hear and especially that I feel like you mentioned the the eight or nine guys in a U yeah. that could obviously be intimidating especially back then but it sounds like they were pretty comforting. And so Jerry was there as well. Was Larry yeah. David there? Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. They so were those all, guys, they're yeah. all there laughing their heads they off. They were all there. And that was, and I had come, I mean, I'd been doing a lot of theater. So I'd been done Broadway and off Broadway. So the, the more people that were in a room to audition, you like early days for me, it was a little, I, I got used to sitting across people with a chair and like reading a scene and being at, essentially acting in a scene with a, with a casting director. I was like, oh, this is how we do it oh, this way. Okay, this is a thing. And I got used to it. But that first like thing out of the gate being like, a, like essentially like an audience was great. And they were like, hi, they were very lovely. Like, obviously, I mean, every, honestly, almost every audition room I've ever walked in, all they want you to do is be, is solve the problem. And I know this from the other side of it too. I'm desperate for you to be like everything I want. I'm like, I just, I want to love you and I want you to be great. And so the energy always feels like welcoming and you just can step into it and, and try and feed off that good energy. And in that case, it was, it was absolutely wonderful. And again, yeah, my, my, I think not, not understanding the humor of the show made me inadvertently do exactly what the show did, which was everything was character-based humor. It wasn't, it wasn't laugh lines. So I just had to approach it like the show approached it, right? Which yeah. is character driven. It's funny. I'm trying to picture you, you know, 30 years ago, getting that side, as you said, on a show you never, number one show in America, you never watched it. You're trying to see why it's funny, but boy, were you funny. And 32 million people watched that episode on, as that kicked mm -hmm. off season six. So that was kind of a, a pivotal season, if you will, in Seinfeld lore. Uh, Tom Sharonis, their famous director, left, so... This was the first episode with Andy Ackerman. A, a couple of the old people left, but obviously Larry and Jerry were still there and it was formidable. And, you know, it was coming off a huge finale, the opposite. So you might have caught up a little bit on that. I now know every episode inside and out because it eventually did that thing that I had hoped that it would, which came on at 11 at night. Oh, yeah. Right. So it, not long after that, too, because it started, you know, gets in the back in the day when you get 100 episodes, you start doing syndication. So I started seeing it and was became obviously obsessed with it because it is literally the funniest show that's ever been on television. So, I mean, I now know it so well. I just remember, I just think of all the conversations I've ever been in where people like refer to Seinfeld stuff and 
And once you get started talking about, remember the time when Kramer did that and you end up talking like you all were in college together and these are people mm. you knew. And that's pretty hard for a show to do. And even when people, people will meet me and they will be like, wait, you did a Seinfeld? Or they'll actually recognize, they're like, wait, 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 wait. Last night I saw that thing, <laughs> like that was a long time ago. But it is still like the biggest thing in the world. And I, it's so funny because when I was a young actress, I worked with this guy, the Harvey Evans. He was a very well-known guy on Broadway. He was so wonderful and he passed last year, but I loved him deeply. And he, he had not done, he'd done like all the Sondheim shows on Broadway. He'd done a million things. But he only did like one or two TV things. He was in the original West Side Story stage and in the movie. He was in he was in Jim Jiminy in the in Mary Poppins, the original. He was in all these big things, but not TV. But he went to LA and he said he was very excited because a friend of his was one of the producers on Cheers and he or sorry, on Frasier. And he ended up being one of Frasier Crane's Self, low self-esteem group and he was like I got to be one of Fraser Crane's low self-esteem group characters and he was like it felt like such a big epic thing even though it was this little moment and I now completely understand what he was saying because that's what I feel like about this I was really lucky it's just this beautiful little nugget that I got to be part of yeah, that that's a we love hearing those stories too from from that kind of like you mentioned it almost like a family at that point. Um, it, so so yeah, so you mentioned how how welcoming the the audition was. Right now you're on now you're on set now you're there. We were talking before just you know me and Chris. Um, you know you were in six scenes, which is a lot for a guest star, even on Seinfeld, where, where guest stars usually shine. But I mean, you were in six different scenes. Um, we kind of wanted to kind of walk through some of them and maybe get get your take on a few of them, especially kind of your first one. Um, well, you're at the ball game. Do yeah. you remember number one? Like, where was that shot? And and you know, you must have had to go on location for that. You're there with Julia and Jerry. Uh, it must have been I don't know a day or so. Or, or how does that work? No audience, I'm assuming. Like, I, I think it's on the lot. lot. From, oh, from what I remember, okay. I think they just built that little piece on the lot. Oh, okay. And because I don't remember going anywhere, and I feel like in my head it was on the lot. It wasn't any big shakes. It wasn't like oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, and it was, and I don't think it was more than half a day. I think it was pretty economically mm. shot. I think it was like a thing, um, and it was fun. It was fun to be outside. It was, right. you know, those guys are amazing, and and you know. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Though that's interesting because I think they shot. There were some actual real ball players in that episode. I don't know yeah. how many of them you got to interact with, but like None. Danny Tarto. Okay, yeah. Because I think <laughs> those were shot in a stadium, from what we from what we gathered. So we thought maybe the exterior was also there, but it sounds like no. But, no, no. Uh, I I only got to see them on TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as yeah, at the other. time. Story. We were uh, we were big on that episode because of that, but um, and then you had a lot of scenes with, with Michael Richards, especially the one that comes to mind for me is you know the poise count and he's like <laughs> you mentioned, just he, he's he's really going at it with you yelling and just I don't know those must have been some fun scenes. It takes there with Michael Richards as far as Kramer goes, but the you know poise count and he's going oh nuts God. on you. It's so he was so funny, but he was so serious. I just remember like. Again, like I didn't know any of these guys that first couple of days. So you meet everybody, like a little table read, you do the thing. And of course, Jerry was very, um, like the nicest. He was the most polite, well mannered, warmest host at a party. Like he was a guy who was like, welcome to this experience, blah, blah. He was, he was kind and he was civilized and sweet. But I didn't have a lot of conversations with him really outside the scenes because he was doing his 500 other things that the man was doing on the show. And same with Julia. I did not, I, I only had one, which I'll tell you about, but I only had one real interaction with her because a couple things were, there was the lady who, I'm glad I rewatched it, the lady who played the person that she does the job interview with, and I've forgotten her, that actress's name, who's very nice. She Gail Strickland. Yes, Gail and Gail and she knew each other from the neighbors. They both lived near each other and had all these people in common. So they were like, bit, 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 bit. and Jason Alexander's Mr. Broadway. And so we had shared a really close friend. It was like, oh, did my friend David, blah, blah, blah. We were chatting. So we were like, bit, 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 bit. so I didn't actually have, I only had one real interaction with her, but um, it was, uh, it was a very welcoming, very warm, wonderful set. And actually I only had one real interaction with Larry David in which he was like like now that I know like everyone knows Larry David as Larry David I'm like oh okay this all makes sense which was you see my hair I mean it's this is what my hair always looks like and the show it's like 
which okay. I can make my hair do, but like you do a little torture and hairspray and it's fine. You could do this, which I did for the audition. I walked into the audition and I had some very big, you know, hair. And when we were rehearsing early days, like the first walkthroughs, I mean, I'm wearing, you know, like that. I look like that. I don't look like a beauty contestant. I'm not wearing a bunch of makeup. My hair is flat. He's like, Oh no, what have we done? Like she does not look like this glorious glamorous girl so at one point he walks up to me and he's like what's happened to your hair and I was like nothing he's like but your hair like it looked different before I was like yeah yeah you do it like I did it I mean I didn't do it just to rehearse I mean but I it'll will it go back <laughs> yeah it'll go back <laughs> it's fine but it'll go it's gonna be like that he's like you sure <laughs> yeah I promise it'll get big again it's okay <laughs> it was like I was like and I didn't even quite know because I was like is he joking <laughs> I didn't even know because he's so wry you like want to laugh you're like I can't tell if I'm like gonna insult him if I think this is hilarious because it seems really funny but I'm like trying to be respectful because I'm like don't fire me because my hair is wet please <laughs> but anyway I was like it'll get big again I promise it's gonna be really big <laughs> like okay he walked away that was literally my only conversation with him ever which was glorious of course well uh, so yeah i guess that takes back to the set you mentioned jerry this is obviously andy ackerman's first uh kind of time doing seinfeld directing i don't know who was kind of running the show did you feel like it sounds like jerry was kind of the point person for everything or yeah. was ackerman kind of leaned in my my memory i don't i won't 100 percent guarantee that that kind of stuff my my set experience was limited at the time but because it was three camera I think there was enough theater reference for me that I could kind of get it I think I think he was very well respected Andy on that set and he was they there was he was allowed to direct I think also you're directing people in their sixth season so those guys are working a lot of stuff out on their own which is what I was enjoying watching them on the set work the bits and then Andy being, oh, yeah, yeah, this. Oh, yeah, that. And I remember George Shapiro being around a bit as well. And he was lovely. Yeah. And so it felt like a really a humming. I've been on first season, like first episodes of directors, first season shows, things getting together. I've been a lot of different now <laughs> over the years, a lot of different incarnations of how sets work. It was humming. It was wonderful. The vibe was great. They knew they were a huge hit, I'm sure. And everything was great. And Andy Ackerman was lovely. And it, it was obviously a great episode and he was a great director for it. So it, it didn't feel like he was, there was some director over there. It felt like he was, he was allowed to do his job and they were respectful of him and he was respectful of them. And it was, it was nice. It was a really pleasant kind of. Yeah. Episode. To, to your point, they were, they were humming, you know, this was yeah. season six kicking off. So what, one of my favorite scenes is, is obviously you and Jerry going out on a date, right? I mean, right away, the scene opens, Kramer's talking to you, voice counts, you got a big waist, da, 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 all these things. Jerry looks so annoyed the whole time. Tell us a little bit about that scene. That must have been, I mean, just Jerry being annoyed, I think, uh, was just brilliant acting from Jerry, who, you know, you know doesn't have any Broadway chops, but uh, I think he pulled oh, it no, off. He was great. I, I thought he was great throughout the whole series because he just never tried, he never tried to do anything that felt wrong to him and so was Agreed. always amazing um in that scene it, as i now remember having watched it finally again um he was sitting next to me so it was really about me interacting with michael richards with kramer and i felt like because i i i'm remembering that because he became her spengali essentially like as soon as he starts talking she's not worried about jerry right. <laughs> so i can really look at him in the scene i'm just like leaning farther and farther into kramer tell me more you know so much about this like yeah man like help me win the pageant so it's literally like poor jerry of course he would have seemed annoyed <laughs> because she quits even <laughs> paying attention to him on this ridiculous date. So um, I, I do remember, this is one thing about Michael Richards, I will say too. He he was also really like lovely, but not like loose actor guy. Like Jason Alexander was like, hey, let's, oh, you did a show. We know people, whatever. Um, 
Michael Richards was like, hello. It was very like, hello, we're going to be working on these scenes. He would rehearse and rehearse. He did make me laugh a lot, not because he was fooling around, but because he wasn't. Like he did that fall when he walks out to see what's out on the, yeah. <laughs> the balcony and he there's <laughs> he slips in the water. He did that fall like 80 times, like we he, like every rehearsal and he practiced how the fall should look and every way that he did it was hilarious. So for me, the hardest time not to laugh was, was the fall because it was deeply hilarious. And also when he's yelling in my face, boys counts, I was just like, I was, I, it, it, it was good that it was almost <laughs> violent because it was the only way to hold it together because he, and not because he was trying to make me laugh it's because he was so good as Kramer and I just wanted to pee my pants I and mean, it was hilarious <laughs> yeah I mean that so the funny. fall of the balcony like you said that's, I that's mean a, that fall yeah, yeah the slip on the fully ball. and you don't expect it and it's such a clever thing it wasn't I don't believe it was in the script he just did it the first time like of course there's going to be water here and then right. everything fell out and was like okay well now that's hilarious you know so yeah, so good yeah. so good um yeah i mean like we mentioned this was your early on television career right and and so it, it, we know you went on to 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 you know producer writer producer um from that side of things and you kind of touched on it earlier but i'd love to hear a little more about that from like you know be watching guys like larry and jerry run the show at seinfeld and then and then move it on to to, to being in that position yourself and auditioning people i mean what what did you take, you know, just from them, just from kind of, you know, all of your real experience, I guess, but we, you know, we like to hear about, you know, what maybe you've learned from their set and, and maybe you've taken to sets you've worked on uh, afterwards. Well, I just want to say one more thing before I get to that, which is, of course, yeah, I had one moment with, you know, the goddess, Miss Julia, Julia Louis Dreyfus, like who. I just have to say it was literally also one of the best moments of my life being on set, which was we had not really spoken because again, she, we didn't have scenes together. She was always with this other friend of hers and then busy because they, you know, they, you know, they're, it's big, they're, they're doing a lot of stuff there. And when we had to do, I didn't know when I auditioned for it, that I had to sing this song badly there. That wasn't part of the sides. Now I've been in Broadway musicals. I'm a singer. So when I, when I saw this, I was like, oh, okay. And I had to work with the, that week, they sent me to a guy to have me learn the song. And he was like, oh, great. The one person who can sing now, we're going to get you on here and you can't, you can't sing. And I was like, that's okay. That's okay. I think I, I always hate when people have to act like they can't sing because they don't, they do this thing where they're off pitch and they're also off, off tempo. And people usually have one or the other. Very few people have neither, right? So I was like, let's just keep her on tempo and just sing anything but the note. And we tried that and he started laughing. He's like, okay, that's what we'll do. But no one had heard it until the day of that Friday. Like the first time anybody heard what that song was going to be it was the day we're all in curlers. We're about to, like the audience is going to be coming in in 10 minutes. So I go over, <laughs> I have to stand in the corner by the Merv Griffin like Miss America set, the little you know, the stuff behind me, little silver yeah. buttons. And I have like curlers in my hair and uh, they play the music and they're like, oh, and a little crowd forms because they're like, well, what's this bit going to be? And it's part, you know, it's partly like crew and everybody else. <laughs> and as as the music comes, she starts walking up and, and comes and stands at the edge of this thing. And I'm like comedy goddess at you know 10 o'clock so I start doing this thing I start singing it people start laughing her face is completely neutral completely not like not anything just like completely like watching assessing watching assessing I finish it people go oh my god they clap they clap and I'm like oh thank god it's funny these guys think it's funny and then they break apart and she walks over to me <laughs> this is like literally the best one she goes that was really funny like that. And I went, wow. That, I go, that means so much to me coming from you. I can't just know that was really funny. And then she turned around and walked away, never cracked a smile. And I was wow. like, this is literally the best moment of my whole life. And obviously I'm such a huge fan of hers. I've watched, I veep was like the most glorious. I was like, this woman is, I mean, all of her shows, everything she's done. She's amazing. And to me, that's also a little thing. I'm like, I I got a compliment, a comedy compliment from Julia Lewis Travis. I'm like, I'm dead. I'm done. I don't need to do anything else. That's great. From 
so amazing. Good. From uh, it's the most unusual that right? Can you sing that still? It's the. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure, it's the most unusual day. If you like, what? Like, it's like all that, like trying to find the note. Just, I just felt for her terror. I just felt like this poor woman. It was a terrible, terrible moment for for little Karen. <laughs> this I know. Was it's funny you mentioned that. So was the was the script set that way? Like the the doves are going to die. I know you talked about you're going to have a magic act. I just wonder if there was anything that changed during the week or well, it, yeah the only thing that changed for me actually there were no changes that script was like gorgeous the only thing they changed was the the song and this is kind of weird because of my history was supposed to be the sun will come out tomorrow it was supposed to be tomorrow from annie and the biggest most fancy show in all the world said too expensive it's stupid we're not going to spend that kind of money on, on that <laughs> wow. song but i had done i had worked with martin charnin and those guys i had done uh, this show, the sequel to Annie, Annie Warbucks in New York. And I had this whole thing and I was like, oh my God, Martin Charnin, blah, blah. And then they're like, no, we're not doing that song. And I was like, oh, but it was very funny. The idea of the most optimistic song in the world as her life is going up in flames was very funny, but they were like, no. And it ended up being great. I mean, it's like, the show is great. That song worked great. So it was all fine, but it was very funny. I was like, oh, too bad. <laughs> I'd like to sing that song and have Martin Charnin want to kill me later. But uh, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 great to hear that. Like, you had to learn to not sing well, and then you made the decision of like, okay, how am I going to do this? There's two a couple ways to do it. It definitely plays well, and it's it's great too because they they bring it back to the closing credits too. I mean, the whole song you get a lot of of time on that with the whole song yeah, playing out. The worst song in the world. And then the other thing is so funny. My dad back in the day, he was like. <laughs> He, he knew that the, the the night the episode aired, he was like, oh, wait, she's going to sing? She didn't tell me she was going to sing. You guys, you guys, he's with friends. She's a really good singer. She's been in New York. She's been the cast albums. And I didn't warn him. And so when the, so when the thing, she sings like that, he's like, that's not how she sings, you guys. She doesn't sing like that. She sings better than that. So I kind of embarrassed my poor father by not having told him in advance, dad, you know, it's, it's, it's bad singing, bad singing. It's not like that. <laughs> well i'm sure you i'm sure he was super proud obviously um phenomenal job on that episode so is it well speaking of dad you, yeah, you, oh, you, you, grew, you grew you grew up in detroit is that right i was born in detroit grew up in michigan and then in arizona uh went to the last couple years of high school and then went to school in uh I went to USC, then I went to RADA in London, and then I moved to New York and, of course, waited tables because that's what you do. Oh, wow. you get a lot of education and then finally started working in theater. And and then randomly, I didn't quite mean to move to L.A., just stuff kind of brought me here. And then it, I kept going back and forth. And then that was just hard and expensive and annoying. And I eventually was like, OK, I've got to get it figured out. So it wasn't actually until 2001 I finally moved properly to LA. So I've been here since then. Wow. Well, fun fact, uh, Brenda Strong, friend of the show, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, was Miss Arizona in real life in Arizona. Oh, uh, oh she's, my Christ. she's so gorgeous. My goodness. I don't know her, but she seems amazing. She's yeah. Seen a lot of cool, iconic stuff. So incredible. So you yeah, obviously you're doing a lot of theater and just going back, like all of a sudden Seinfeld's now a sick, did you want to get into the sitcom bar? Was that something you asked your, your agent yeah, about? Or? Was yeah. like, here's the thing. And I'll get, I know I totally skipped your big question about how the, that, <laughs> I promise you I'll get back to it, but I will just say as an actor, then um, I loved doing three good three camera because it was like theater and it was fun. And I love I love a certain kind of a comedy. Good comedy is just wonderful to do. It's so satisfying. It's fun. It's like, it's a little dance. It's timing. It's all that stuff. And, you know, it's just not easy to get all those big jobs. <laughs> so I tried. And I'm, I'm one of those actors who did a million pilots. I did the stuff. I tried. I tried. And I always did well enough. And I'm very grateful. And I, like, stayed working. And I'm like, that's that's a win. I'll take that win. But, yes, I would have loved to have done, like, like a proper, like have a proper, like run at some, uh, like some three camera comedy back in the day of the, of the, that was when it was really in its heyday, some great, great stuff was happening. Um, but I also, you know, was working, got a lot of like drama stuff going. And then once you're kind of in that 
it, you know, you can still bounce around, which I did. I mean, same thing with writing. I bounced around in genre and comedy and drama, drama and all that. So thankfully, because that's the way to kind of keep rolling and having fun and, you know, staying kind of sharper. But uh, I would have loved to have done a, like one of those shows, but I didn't, I, you know, I never quite, <laughs> never quite got one of those things or was one of them. So, you know, I loved all the time I got to spend on any of those sets though. And, and it's, it was a great, also a great lifestyle. I mean, you just really had a life. You could really have a life. Those were, those were those five day weeks, a couple of real short days in those five day weeks and only one or two long days in those weeks. So it was, it was a good lifestyle for people. So yeah, I would have, I would have dug it hard, <laughs> but alas. Yeah. We hear that often from a lot of the actors we've talked to is that, that schedule helps a lot. Right. And then just kind of getting into that. Yeah. That groove, yeah. it seems to be, uh, and then you have the live audience, like you mentioned, which probably yeah, it's is really is, fun. Like yeah, there's it's like theater. fun and joy. I mean, I love all of it. I mean, getting a big meaty dramatic scene is awesome. It's really good. And I, I like doing all that too, but you know, especially these days, oh, make me laugh. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> I like, a, I like a comedy. Yeah. And yeah, speak- yeah, exactly. it- Sorry, Tony. Go ahead. So, yeah. So, speaking of that, and you mentioned you never, you never watched the show, and then you told us you went back, you watched them, you loved it, etc. But I wonder if you did watch the show, if that would have changed things. Like, would you have gone into that audition differently, knowing how you think a Kramer would want to react, etc.? I'm, I'm, I just wonder about that. No, I actually don't know because, because like I said, I think I inadvertently made it character driven. And I think watching it, you would have known that the humor is character driven because it's not about, because sometimes I've done, I mean, there are a lot of three camera stuff back in the day that was really like, you got to land a joke. And sometimes that joke was not funny. So you had to find a way to be like, something about the way you do that joke is funny. Something about your timing or the way you subvert expectation with your timing even if the joke isn't funny there's something about the way you did it that was funny you there's a lot of kind of working things out to try and make stuff work um i i I hope i would have recognized that it was just character driven and done something similar and that really was she really (laughs) i watched it today she really was what i felt like i thought this America contestants seemed like to me. I mean, it's not like what they were. Obviously, they were much more realized than Miss Karen, but like that's what they felt like to me. So I, I think I might have been not far off that, but yeah, I might well have been blessed by not having seen it and not blowing my shot by being by being well, influenced by what I had seen. Yeah, well, you, you hit it out of the park for sure. And this is kind of a kind of a sneaky we we're talking earlier a sneaky memorable episode right like yeah. the cotton uniform stuff uh obviously your stuff the introduction to mr pitt you know mr. pitt i know did, and the did you get to meet him? i did he was lovely he was super lovely and then I, I met him again another time later just socially and he was just so lovely and i forgot about i forgot about mr pitt until I saw it again today. And I was like, Oh my God, Mr. Pitt and the socks. And like, I love so much. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Pitt is Elaine there. <laughs> Jerry Falls. It's literally, it's so deeply funny. They're just really like all these little nuggets of just like uh, a laugh just comes out of you. Like you can't, they're so funny in this show when she's like, I can't go. And you just, it's just funny. It's like so funny. It's a very funny episode. There's, it's, I, I, I really enjoyed watching it again today. And now, and now we know you're a good fan because you picked up on that. Hello, Mr. Yeah. Pitt. Oh that's my great. God. I loved it. It was perfect. That's, uh, that's a great one. I mean, that's what the show was, right? It was, yeah. they were basically in perpetual adolescence is how I like to say it. They're, you know, they're just two kids. Call up like a kid would call up a house with a dad. Exactly. Exactly. Pitt. And then she's like, I can't, yeah. her little face, she's like, I can't go. And she does her, it's great. Yeah. And, and you picked up on that too, because that's, that's how you played that character. Like you mentioned, when you're at dinner, when Kramer starts talking, you're like you're done with Jerry, you just zero it in. Like, oh, really? What else? Like that, and you exactly. got the focused eyes, and you, you know, you 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 play that 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 so well, and just uh, yeah, and then the whole doves thing, and um, yeah, it's just yeah, a great I mean, episode. It's just it's so funny. I mean, what's your talent, magic? Come on, <laughs> that's really funny. Like, what Miss America? And the other really funny line, which I forgot, which. <laughs> 
hey, so it's Kramer. I'm going out with, with one of the this American contestants. You want to come? And he's like, which state? Like, That's which his first state? question. <laughs> state. And it's just hilarious. They're never in contention. Like, no. <laughs> it's just- he's right. I, they, I looked it up. They still haven't won one, Marguerite. <laughs> I think back in the day I looked, too. I was like, oh, yeah. really sad. But, yeah. Yeah, well, I forgot the other line I liked. You were like, you know, you're so serious in the limo. And you're like, Kramer, would you be my personal, uh, you know, consultant? Like, yeah. you just let the guy for crying out loud. Like, uh, I mean, she's not. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you're like, God bless her. But she is somebody who is, you know, she needs a Svengali. So, of course, she's not going to seem like there's a whole lot going on. If you're going to meet Kramer, have him be your Spengali. Your magic, your talent is magic. Like, come on, man. So I don't think she was like a little bit of a, I really just hope it's all going to work out. Like this was, you know, poor, poor Karen Hansen. I just felt like she went back to Rhode Island and sort of said, you know, that's it for beauty pageants for me. I think she probably yeah. met a nice fella and yeah, we were talking earlier. You, you, uh, it was it was shame you weren't invited for the for the finale because I mean you're one of the people who's no, live. Crushed got, like, totally her dream. Yeah, yeah, that finale was great. I mean, they probably could have like done so many. Yeah, there was a long list. Yeah, it's a long list, heard. but they yeah, did. Yeah. I mean, her dreams were definitely crushed yeah, yeah, yeah. by uh, carelessness with that. Uh, Jerry that gives the water. yell. He, he curses in the limo at Kramer. That's always a classic too. Whenever they <laughs> That's do that funny, on, right? on a sitcom, you know, shut the fuck up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like. For it was hilarious so what are you up to these days i know you mentioned picketing but outside of that any any projects um you're writing producing tell us a little bit about uh where we can see you next well i uh, um so yes we are striking sadly but hopefully that will get resolved in the next probably couple three months we'll see what's then i think i imagine there will be an explosion of new wonderful stuff like there was the last time so that's good um so yeah, since I was still acting up until Vampire Diaries and I did six seasons acting on that. And then um, during that time I'd been writing, I always kind of had to like, I always was writing. I did like wrote a couple of little plays here and there done in New York and here. And and then when I came to, when I came to LA, like so many of my friends were writers and they were really, really supportive and like, come on, like, let's, let's have you do this. And I was like, I don't know if I can write TV. I don't think I, I don't think I understand it. And then I was doing it more and more. And of course I, I understood it more and then got some chances and said, all right, why don't I do this and sold a pilot and started writing for TV. And, and so I, uh, I ended up, I've ended up, that's kind of what I've been doing is writing and producing for now, like 10 years. I think the last, I did do a, a, a like one day on um, little fires everywhere. Cause my dear friend, Liz Tigelar, who's the showrunner of that, wanted everybody she's amazing and she wanted everybody that she knew to be in it in some way so I literally she was like will you come and do it she like, like one line or two lines like a half a page I was like, I'll do anything so it was really fun I hadn't been acting on a set in a super long time so I went to set whatever it was like a year and a half ago for like one day and I was like this is so relaxing to just go be an actor on set you can just like focus on one thing because being a writer producer is wonderful it's super fulfilling it's a great great job it's just also a huge job and you feel like your brain you just don't have any space in your brain left for much else so um but I've been doing that for a long time and most recently like I know on Netflix from scratch is a thing that I wrote on it's like it was a beautiful show oh yeah uh I, I then a genre show I did called Vampire Academy is on Peacock and then um, those are the two things that are on now. I mean, going back, you could see Casual, which was a really great Hulu show, which I was really proud of. Um, obviously did originals and did legacies and did, I don't even know what else. I think those, I think everything is still always available all the time now. So you're like, what's out? You're like, well, I think kind of everything, but, um, but yeah. And then now I'm just, the timing was kind of, everybody everything was kind of a little bit on hold because we didn't know if there'd be a strike so I have a couple mm-hmm. of things that I'm super super excited about in development that I hope we can just everybody like send a little like hope into the universe uh that something might happen with that are kind of super fun and then that'll be that'll be that when we come when we come out of it so but it's been the one thing I will say about the strike is is seeing all these writers and I'm sure all the 
you know, these Seinfeld writers or everybody's out there and yeah, uh, yeah. great support. And it's really so much solidarity, but also like so fun to see all these people. So weirdly, it's really social and really, really fun. So that part of it has been just really like not, not terrible. I'm not going to lie. It was like, I'm sure I'll get hotter and more, you know, tired of it as everybody will as we go on. But it's been, it's been very positive. It's been very good energy. That's great. Uh, we, yeah, we know it's a close knit community, so uh, glad. Hopefully, yeah, hope. That's what. That's all we can ask. And we were hopeful that you got that call in San Diego some twenty nine years ago. So <laughs> there's only one Miss Rhode Island, and it's uh. you, Marguerite. So can't, can't thank you enough for spending some time with us tonight. And you know, you will forever live in Seinfeld lore as Miss Rhode Island. Thank you. And thank you so much for asking me, you guys. It's You've been patient because it took me a minute, but I'm like, I'm so excited. And I'm going to go back and listen to all of your podcasts too. And you and just like I did with Seinfeld, I'll probably be like, oh my God, why am I listening to this? So I'm really excited. So thanks for, for uh, inviting me. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks so much. It was so much fun. Okay. Cheers. Thank Have you. Cheers. Bye.